How are we doing everyone? Mitch here with another Logic Pro X or 10 tutorial. What we're going to be talking about today is mastering. So first, before we start, a couple things to get out of the way. First off, this is not going to be what the professionals do in their studios. Uh, first off, we don't have the expensive plugins that those people have. We don't have the experience that those people have. And we also don't have the education that those people have. So the best we can do here is what I like to call a pseudo master, and that's what we're going to be going over in this tutorial. Also, for the sake of brevity of this video, I am going to be doing a lot more talking and a lot less listening to the track and doing is basically what I'm going to be calling it. So for those of you who are saying that, yes, you need to be listening to the track more, you're doing this all wrong, you are correct, but I just want to make sure that you guys get the concepts so that you can go and spend more time in this, uh, more time than I am going to be spending on this. So let's jump right in. First off, I'm going to put a meter on this track. We need to track what's going on across the stereo spe or frequency spectrum as we go along in this mastering process. We've spent so long getting this track mixed correctly. So we need to keep that mix as we go from plugin to plugin. So we're going to be using the multimeter to track that. So the next plugin I like to do use is what's called the exciter. The exciter is basically something that goes against what I just said. It's going to be adding artificial high noise, or not noise, but artificial frequencies uh, in higher. And what this is going to be doing is just going to make our track a little bit more crisp. And that's all it's going to do. If you don't want to do this, if you don't think it sounds great, you don't have to do this. This is not an integral part. Uh, but I find that a lot of the mixes are missing this crispness. And that's what we're going to get here with this plugin. So I'm just going to do this really quick. Uh, so, uh, yeah. So it didn't change it too much, just a little bit more going on in the high frequencies, which is exactly what I want. Next is going to be the uh, EQ. And be careful here because we are going to be using the linear phase EQ. Why are we using this over the channel EQ? The channel EQ skews particular frequencies when you start trying to EQ it. So we need to use the linear phase EQ so that we do not do this. This is going to save our mix just a little bit more. Um, and then also something to note here is that I don't ever cut. I just add, I boost in particular frequencies, and when I boost, I only boost a little bit. Because, like I said before, we need to keep this mix that we've worked so hard on. Uh, so I'm just going to listen to this track with the multimeter up, and we are going to see uh, the particular frequencies that need to be boosted maybe a little bit, and then also uh, kind of what's going on, and uh, I'll just kind of explain it afterwards. So uh, let's get right into it. All right, so for the re the reason I did and boosted in those particular areas is because one, if you were looking at the multimeter around 220 and about uh, 1.5k, uh, there was a gap. There wasn't a very large volume, and we're boosting a little bit in these areas because this is just going to help us out in the end when we start compressing and limiting. Uh, so that's the reason for that. So if you press Option Command, click and drag our multimeter down to the bottom. Uh, let's do it before and after just to make sure that we aren't screwing uh, up our mix significantly across the frequency spectrum. And this is just good practice. So let's listen to it now. Okay, so there was a little bit more going on in the high frequencies, and that's because of the exciter, and then there was a little bit more gain boost in the 220 hertz, which is what we did with the EQ. And so that's okay, that's normal, nothing too big, um, and that's just going to help our track out just a little bit. So next is I'm going to be using a plugin called the Stereo Spread. If you've never used this before, kind of a cool little plugin. Let's, let me just do a, a demo of this really quick. All right, so what just happened there is we're taking the entire mix, 
splitting up into certain uh, sections based on the frequency ranges and forcing it into stereo pretty dramatically at that. Uh, so it's kind of a cool plugin. You can do some different interesting things with this, especially when you automate this. Keep that in mind if you are looking for something weird to do with your track. Uh, but also here in mastering, we just don't want to be putting this on the low frequencies as well as the high. So we're going to be centering this into the middle of the frequency range and we are going to lower the intensity. I like to keep it around 8 to 10%, uh, just a little bit. You barely even notice it, but it's just going to create a wider uh, mix at the end. So uh, let's drop that down and let's do a before and after just to see what it sounds like. If there's something dramatic that we need to change. So nothing too big going on there. It's just going to split that up just a little bit. And we start compressing and limiting. It's going to sound pretty good and wide in the end. So uh, next I'm going to be doing compression. And I'm not going to be using a compressor. I'm going to be using a multipressor. Why are we using a multipressor over a compressor? It's because if you start compressing with the amount that we are supposed to be and needing to be doing on this track with a regular compressor, any snare drum, kick drum, vocal line, anything loud in the mix is going to squish the rest of the frequency spectrum because we're trying to compress the whole track based on that loud hit or that loud uh, impulse in the song. And that's not what we want. We want to split this up into particular frequency ranges so that we can do a certain we can have a different compressor for each range and that's going to get rid of some of these problems with you hit a bass drum really hard and it compresses the cymbals at the top end we don't want that so that's why we're splitting it up first of all when I open this up I drop the expander down not really necessary but just something I do uh, and for this tutorial I'm just going to be working with the compressor threshold and the gain makeup uh, so I'm not going to be working with your peak RMS your attack and your release um, I'm going to be working with the ratio a little bit but just know that those are things that I'm not going to be working with but you should take a look at when you are mastering so what am I listening for when I do this if you listen to a particular channel you can solo it out what I'm listening for is, is there particular parts of this track where, say in this low region, a bass kick hits and you're just muddying up the entire range. If that's happening, there's too much compression. And so you need to have a fine line between a lot of compression and just enough so that you're not really ruining and muddying up that region. So I'm just going to go through this. Um, and make sure to solo out when you are working with a particular region and then also bypass and unbypass when you are trying to make up gain because that's useful uh, when doing that. So uh, I'll just go through it and uh, yeah, let's do this. So lowering threshold at this point. So we're starting to get a bunch of compression here in the main view. I'm going to increase the ratio a little bit and that's way too much so I'm going to keep dropping it down until I start hearing it come back to normal I'm sorry it's kind of hard to hear I'm going to increase the gain just a little bit All right, so those bass kicks aren't doing too much to the mix here. So let me just bypass, get the correct amount of uh, gain makeup here. All right, so as you can see, not too much compression down here. I find that the higher frequencies are more apt to take more compression than the lower ones. So let's move on uh, to the next region. The higher frequencies can also take more uh, ratio. Uh, that's something to note as well.
All right, so this is a little bit of a harder channel because particular parts of it are going to be really loud, particular parts are going to be really low. And so what you need to do here is just kind of get a happy medium. Some parts are going to be compressed more and there's going to be less of a gain on it. The higher parts or the lower parts are going to have a little bit of higher gain. You're basically just evening out here at this point. So let's move on to the next channel. And final channel. All right, so this is very dynamic in that every single master is not going to be the same. So don't copy the values that I'm using here. Uh, this is just a guideline. I'm trying to show you how the process works so that you can go and do it yourself. So let's listen to it before and after. Make sure that the overall gain here is not increased or decreased by any. And if it is, we'll uh, change the output gain volume here in this uh, in this plugin. <laughs> All right, so it's not too bad. Uh, there's a little bit of a blip, uh, and that's just when you turn it on and off because those compressors are starting up. Uh, so not too bad. Not too bad at all. We're going to call that good. So also, I'm just going to do my option command, drag my multimeter down, and for good measure, we're going to do it before and after just to make sure we're still on the right track. All right, so you can see the gain is about the same. If we look, the after should have a little bit more level dynamics. So let's see if that, if we can see that here in these, uh, in, in these two uh, multimeters. So you can see that there is a slight change in the before to after on the dynamics, uh, and and that's exactly what we're going for here with the multipressor. That's what the point of it is. Uh, so next, we're going to use the add limiter or the adaptive limiter and this is a little bit different uh, from Logic Pro 9 now to Logic Pro 10 in that uh, for some reason they if you increase the gain it will clip inside the plugin so just make sure that you uh, select inner sample peak detection uh, from the drop down at the bottom so now when we go into this what are we listening for how much gain is too much gain here with this limiter and that question is also very hard to answer but I'm going to explain it in uh, so explain it like this. If, like in the compressor, you hit a snare that compresses the rest of the track, something that just muddies up the rest of the track, it could be a snare, a kick, some vocal line, anything, like I was talking about before, that is too much limiting. We want to make sure that the song uh, doesn't sound muddy, even though we're adding and limiting this, compressing this to a very high level. Uh, so just we're going to keep adding gain until it just sounds not correct and then we're going to dial it back just a little bit. You know, that doesn't sound too bad. So we're going to roll with that. So let's do actually a before and after now that we've reached the end of our pseudo master. Uh, so let's just solo out this old track. It's going to be just a normal, the same track, uh, just without all the plugins on it. And then the new. So you can see automatically that there's going to be an increase in gain, which is part of the mastering process. There's going to be, it's going to create a little bit of a wider track, which is also what we were going for. And it just sounds bigger in general. And that could be attributed to either uh, the wideness or the increase in volume. So that's exactly what we're trying to do here with our pseudo master. Now, 
If I wanted to go and take this even farther, I would output this probably to a wave. I would go listen to it on car speakers, you know, a home stereo system, earbuds. Make sure that and take notes on every single one of these systems on what to change. Then you would come back here into Logic, do it, bounce it, trial and error, make sure that it sounds good on as many platforms as you can test it on. And that is what you probably would be doing at the end of your master and just making it sound perfect on as many platforms as possible. So everyone, thanks for watching. If you want to pick my next tutorial, check out that survey, survey in the description below. Also, uh, comment, rate, subscribe like a freaking best if you like this tutorial. And I will be back with more very soon. Everyone, have a great day. I'll see you very soon. Bye.